Hey everyone, it's me, Alma. So, I thought I can go live today. Let's see if I can move this right now. <laughs> you guys can see me. Alright, so, I have a topic today about how you can have valuable content. Let me see. Yes. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, six ways to show valuable um no, no. Six ways to show value in your content. That's what I want to talk about. Um, when you write your content, either for clients or for your own blog, how do you show value so that people can engage with it, they can share it, and um, that your clients like it if it's a client piece, right? Because showing value is like the number one important thing for your content. So I thought I can share like six different ways you can show value in your content. Hi! Yeah, I'm just, that's like an impromptu. I'm trying to go live every week, so. But I do have a topic for today, but if you have any questions about freelancing and blogging, just pop them in and I will answer them as I go through what I want to share with you guys. So I do want to share, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to see where this, my little stick here. <laughs> I do want to share um, some tips to, with your content. And if you have any specific questions about your content, just post them here, but you know, I've been reading a lot of blog posts and, you know, one of the things that I'm noticing that maybe not a lot of blog posts have is this idea of, of having clarity. OK, so the number one thing you can do to show value is clarity in your content. No fluff, no fluff writing. And that's hard, especially I don't know if you guys use an AI writing tool, but I do use Jasper as an AI writing tool and Jasper is very fluffy, like he's very not concise with his wordings. <laughs> so I have to go back and edit my piece to make sure that the main point of whatever that sentence is doesn't have all the fluff words in it, you know. So it's really like tightening up your content, tightening up those sentences so that it is clear to the reader what they are reading. So that's clarity, okay, having clarity. Um, and then that goes along with the next point that I have. My notes are just over here on my screen is to be concise. My hair is just being wonky today is to be concise and not wordy. Like that's also important. I know for a lot of freelance writers, if they get a client piece and like, I need to write 2000 words and they're at 1500, they might be compelled to just write like just wordier sentences. <laughs> you know, they'll split up their contractions, you know, instead of, uh, we're doing this, it's, we are to add that extra word. Like I wouldn't go so far as to do things like that, especially for a client piece. You know, if you aren't hitting the mark at 2000 words, you need to look at how deep you're going in with your content and see if you can add another section to your subtopics or add a new subtopic, because obviously you're not hitting the mark. The client wants 2000 words, but you're not writing that, which means you're missing the mark in some way. Oh, hey, I need help making my post longer without a lot of fluff. Yes, I've been thinking of trying Jasper lately. I feel like for ad revenue, longer posts do better. Yes, definitely. There's two things going on here with perfectly stylish cuts. Uh, longer posts are better for ranking potential and for monetization purposes, right? Because when you think of a longer post, it, it flushes out everything that the person wants to know. You're answering as many questions as possible. You're doing all that you can so that it is converting um, with Jasper. Jasper can definitely help. And I've been doing that. I've been doing that a lot for smart mom ideas, a little bit with twins, mommy, but not much. And I don't touch it for my Elna Kane site because it is a high ranking site. So I'm not going to touch my high ranking sites. I am using it for my niche site, mostly for my niche site. But what I have to do is because Jasper is very wordy, I have to go back and just, um, chop a lot of the words out, <laughs> like chop a lot of the beginning parts of the sentences and stuff, you know, only find like the, the really uh, valuable part that 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 Jasper is writing. So it does help you. What I like about Jasper is that it helps you with product descriptions. I hate writing to product descriptions. So if it can, if I can plug in, you know, a game and some features and it gives me a nice sentence or paragraph, I'm going to use that. I'm going to look through it. I'm going to put my keyword in there and I'm going to swap it out and add whatever my topic is. Like, I'm going to do that. How do you know where to add H1s and H2s? Does that matter? Yes, I'm going to talk about your outline. Um, 
the last couple points. So I will get to that. But with valuable content not being concise or being concise and not wordy, if you use Jasper, you do need to be a good editor to edit as much as you can. Now, you know, I'm not saying you for your own blog, like, yeah, you can be wordy. Like, I'm just trying to think the last time I used Jasper for smart mom ideas. You know, I've been using Jasper for like FAQs. So that adds another um, section in your post to make it longer. So let me show my recent post. I did make it longer. Here, let me see if I can show you. Um, here it is. So here's FAQs. So you can see I added a Jasper came up. I added some of the questions and Jasper um, helped because it was pulling questions from the post already. So I added like that question I added and then Jasper added that question and that question. And then this is what it wrote. Like a lot of it is Jasper written right here. So, you know, there is no definitive answer to this question as every person experiences with pregnancy can be different. You know, some women may start feeling tired. That's very wordy, but for an SMI post and at the end of this post, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I would not give this to a client. I would not give the, like, this is too wordy. You know, like you can answer that very quickly, you know? You know, when you're at each person is, has different experiences when they're pregnant and then some women feel tired and fatigue within the first few weeks and others later in pregnancy. Boom. Like, there you go. It's concise. Right. So but with like I said, with an S in my post, I'm OK with that because it's it's at the end of the post. I'm doing this for ranking purposes and, you know, it's adding another 500 words to my content to make it a 2000 word blog post. So adding something like an FAQs using Jasper can really help. Uh, let me see. Hey guys, thanks for joining me. I'm just talking about how to add value to your content. And um, there was a question about adding, making it more longer, like how to add value when it, when you want it long form. Um, another way to show value is through your stats and credible sources, especially if you're getting paid for that content, especially if clients seek that content. You definitely, definitely, definitely want to have uh, some stats. One thing to realize, though, if you are going to use stats in your client piece is to not pull from competitors. All right. Competitor sites, competitor stats, um, unless the client is OK with that. Sorry, excuse me. My nose is still running. So I would be careful with that. You know, if I'm writing a post for um, smart, for, like for smart blogger, I'm not going to uh, link to an opt-in monster uh, stat because they're trying to compete with opt-in monster, right? Like, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to pull from other sources that aren't ranking for what I'm writing about, basically. All right. Perfectly stylish cuts. In my case, I have a craft blog. Yes, I remember. And I share new crafts all the time. Yes, I'm so torn on how to write a long post for each new design. I'm sure if that makes sense. No, you know, I realize that you have to also realize the um, the type of medium you're providing with a craft post. Videos are supposed are probably your best bet. It doesn't have to be long form. What you can do is find those keywords, put them underneath the post but um and look at other crafts that are ranking what posts are ranking that that you can see you know again if i pull from smart mom ideas i don't know let me i did some coloring pages let me see what here um unicorn so I did, I did 61 free unicorn coloring pages. And so here I added the keywords as my subheading. So I had, this was a, a keyword. So then I just had a couple of things with an image. And then another keyword is, is this one with a couple sentences and an image. Another keyword a couple sentences in an image, do you see? And then to make it longer, I said, this is what you can do with your crafts. 
you can do these things with these coloring pages. So I did that to make it longer. People aren't gonna read that, but Google can look at as long form content. Does that help you? Does that help you? That's how I was able to make something that's short, long. So you can put a video in there, put images in there, uh, anchor your, your subtopics with keywords, and then at the end, you know, here are some cool craft ideas you can do with the craft I just showed you kind of thing. Hopefully that helped. Hey, you guys, thanks for joining me. I'm just talking about how to add valuable content or how to have valuable content. And one of them was to have credible sources. So especially for client pieces, but even for like your regular uh, blog, I think there is a. Sorry, I think I had a stat in one of these like uh, regular blog posts here. Now I can't find it. But like just in my regular blog posts for support mom ideas, I may have a stat that's necessary, especially if it's for like a difficult keyword and you, like doctors are writing about it or like uh, nutritional coaches are writing about it or like doulas are writing it and those are the ones that are ranking. I need to add a little bit of credible sources in my content because I'm not a doula. I'm not in the medical field and see if I can rank for that, which is highly unlikely, but it's something that I can add definitely to my post to try to make it more credible, more valuable. Yes, I love that. I need to make some roundup of my own craft type posts. I may be able to make those long forms. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Try that out. Try that out for sure. Um... So yeah, adding those credible stats, I like to have a swipe file. So if you're a freelance writer, definitely have a swipe file. I just use Google um, Docs. Yes, Google Docs. You can use Google Sheets if it's it's more categorized that way. But uh, Google Docs, I just slap the link and I might pull a quote from that post so that I know what that uh, stat is for. And then I will go in my post and then see if I can use that quote or go to the post, the link, and see if I can use something else. Um, so that seems to work and it makes my writing go much faster when I have a swipe file, definitely. So make sure to show credible stats and sources. Um, and then demonstrating your knowledge of the topic can show value. So. I know we are all writing about things that, you know, to rank, especially like for smart room ideas, you know, like I, I can only do so much with the content that I'm writing. I do have writers that uh, write for that content and, you know, they're not doctors, but they're writing about pregnancy stuff. So it's not that hard to write about something you are not that familiar with, but you do need to demonstrate in one, in some capacity that you are familiar with that. And you can do that with, the words that you use, right? If there's a certain language around email marketing, using those words, you know, segmenting, um, the, the money is in the list is another thing, you know, like there are certain phrases in email marketing uh, that you, your open rate, click through rate, things like that, that if you're not familiar with and you don't have them in your post, it's not gonna show that you are knowledgeable of that topic. Same thing with the keto diet or same thing with certain other topics. You need to know the language that people are using and use that in your content. Um, it's the people you reference, the books that you reference, things like that, that show that you are knowledgeable in that. You know, I can reference a cool copywriting book that I've been reading, you know, that may not be well known, but it's a good book, right? So things like that, where you know that, you know a new, a cool recipe book or you knew or you know a cool craft book then yeah you can mention that um that shows your credibility in that topic and then the subtopics that you write about so how you um what you write about in your content that shows value so i was going to show you i know you're asking uh perfectly stylish cuts of an outline so I'm working, so when I write, especially for my high ranking blog, I take the time to craft a really good outline. I take my time, like I really do, and I sit on it before I really start writing it, or I might give it to a um, a writer, we'll see. But So this is what I have for like my topic. 
So I built it out, you know, with intro, topic, 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 like, and then here I'm gonna write the steps underneath and then I'm gonna do that. So this is how I structure my post. These are all like other keywords I can add if I want to, or just some ideas. So that's how I sort of structure my post, my outline with the topics and that they're keyworded and that I have a flow. So let me, show, let me see, where am I going? Yes, so your outline serves a purpose. Like you are walking someone through your post. It's like a journey for them. So you need to write your outline that way and not be so like jarring, you know, like you're jumping from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, or it's so long and it's so nested in that it gets confusing to read your post. You know, you have an H2 and then H3 and then H4, and then you go back to H2 and H3 and H4 and H5 and then H2, like that's too nestled in. If you have problems with that, you need to break up your blog post into two blog posts. It's too detailed it's too nestled down and that's very hard to follow especially online it just it's really hard to follow so um you need to to structure it so that it's easy to read and there's like a there's a journey for the person to understand a new topic oh i never thought to outline first this really helps things yeah definitely i mean as a freelance writer that gets paid to write outlines like you have to have an outline some clients require you to have an outline to submit before you write. Um, so it's key to have an outline. Um, and it gives me structure. Like, I know where I'm going to flow and put my writing. Like, I wanted to talk about copywriting jobs, but I'm going to do that at like at the end, after they know what copywriting is, after they realize what the potential is for copywriting, when they have examples of copywriting, when I have the steps to become a copywriting. Okay, now I'm going to show you how you can find some jobs. Like, I'm sort of like structuring my outline and as I'm writing, I might change it. I might move copywriting jobs up. I might realize, you know what? Maybe they want to know right now kind of thing. So, you know, it's a, it's a working outline. And then the last way to show value in your content is to SEO it the right way. You know what keyword you're using. You know where to place it in your content. Um, you know how many times, you know, all the related keywords, those things help you ranking, of course, but it actually shows your um, credibility, like you have done the research. You know, you, you can tell when a post has been heavily researched. I mean, I, I do most of that on my own, like Kane site because it, it demands that type of content. You know, this, uh, this post here, like demanded, look at my TO, my, um, Look at that. Look at my table of contents. It demanded all of that. Look at that. Do you see? It shows. And these are all keyworded. This is all keyworded. See, but it's detailed. It's detailed. See, what is indeed? That's a keyword, right? All this stuff. Keep going. And then we go to the next one. So something like this, of course, I could get paid for that as for a client piece. Like, Oh, I'd get paid probably over a thousand dollars for that. Um, but I wrote it for my own blog um, to help me with ranking. Now, I don't know if I'll ever rank for the key term because it's like the most competitive keyword ever on the planet. <laughs> but I wrote it anyways because I know I will find some Google is going to slot me somewhere like with the keywords that I mentioned in here. And it will slot me with something that's less competitive, I'm sure. And maybe over time, maybe, maybe in two years. I can rank for that, maybe. How do you make a table of contents like that in your post? I love the table. Um, my husband coded that, but there are plugins that you can do, uh, like a TOC, just go to WordPress and, and type in TOC plugin and you'll find some. I'm sure there are ones. I know um, other bloggers use like a plugin. Uh, we just code ours because my husband doesn't really like plugins because plugins slow your site, your, like it slows your site down. So. We try to to customize as much as we can, but there are definitely plugins. Um, I think there's one even that you can have one scroll on like the sidebar. That's really nice. If you can have it scroll on the sidebar, I would get a plugin like that. I think there's some plugins like that. 
hey, you guys, thanks for joining me. I'm just talking about like how to show value in your content. And I'm sh showing you like the SEO part of it. Now, if you ever need help, I do have lots of resources for you guys. If you're on the blogging side, you know, Ready, Set, Blog for Traffic has the most up to date SEO module there is for bloggers, definitely for bloggers, um, as well as Pinterest module that's fairly up to date um, and then a content module. So if you're a blogger, go to twinsmommy.com, go to courses. It's ready, set, blog for traffic. If you are a freelance writer, I do have freelance blogging in a weekend. And that has a really detailed SEO module for writers that want to get paid for that type of service. Um, so I am adding lots of new uh, lessons. I added a module about viral blog posts, how to write viral content for your own blog. And if clients want viral content. Because that, that, that's a different way. That's a different outline. That's a different process, for sure, for finding content ideas for vi uh, viral posts. And so I've been playing around with that as well. So you guys, thanks for joining me. I think those are all the topics we did. Uh, outline, SEO, keywords, uh, knowledge of the topic, credible sources. It's concise and not wordy, and it has clarity. I would love to keep seeing more Jasper video, by the way. Yeah, I just signed up and I'm going to use it as an affiliate for post. Yes. Well, twins, the Twins Mommy YouTube channel has two Jasper posts or videos, two Jasper videos. So check those out. Um, and then I will. I want to do some more Jasper content and I might put it in Ready, Set, Block for Traffic. I actually don't have a, a lesson on how to use Jasper. So I might do like a deep dive on that um, as well. And... Um, I know Jasper integrates with Surfer SEO, which I haven't used, but I've been seeing a lot of YouTubers talk about it. So I think I'm going to sign up for Surfer SEO, is it Surfer SEO, and see how I can work that with Jasper. I think that would be a nice addition. So I might do that and then do a video on that on my channel, on the Twins Mommy channel. I have your course, of course. That's great. Yeah. So we'll see. Maybe I'll, I'll add a, a lesson. I do want to. It's just been... A long time coming kind of thing but i am playing around with i am growing my youtube channel so I'm, I, that's why i've been putting the content there instead of my my course but um i can definitely add like a beginners of jasper and then i use it for pin titles actually Ooh, i've been doing a lot of it for social media for my pins so i might show that in the course for pinterest and then yeah i'll think about it but thanks yes all right you guys i do you guys have any questions? I know some people are have joined, so thanks. Um, if you have any questions about blogging, about um, all that, but I, I thought I'd share, just be more like themed for this live about creating valuable content because I've been on the content machine. I've been trying to write content lots. Like I have that outline you just saw. Uploading um, Smart Mom Ideas. I've been trying to upload new posts almost like every single day. Like I'm trying to, ramp up the content for that that's that blog because the traffic is sort of going like this like it's shooting up now yes please share use it for social yes yes oh cool cool yeah then i'll have to think it's hard because i, I want to use it for my my um youtube channel but i know for my blog course it would be valuable too so my pin title i've been doing a cool thing with my pin titles and my pin image creation so I guess I can show that. That's like a strategy, I guess, in uh, Ready, Set, Blog for Traffic. I do have several different pin strategies, and that is a strategy I've been using lately. So it's new. I think I should add it probably. You're right. Amazing. Oh, hey, Motherly Heap. I'm glad you, you're you here. Oh, uh, hey, um, Amy Copywriting. If you just joined. Yeah, I've been uh, just talking about adding value to your content and how you can do that, especially if you want to get paid for your clients. How do you demonstrate value? Um, not really thought leadership, but if you can demonstrate thought leadership content, that definitely, definitely shows value in your content that you know what you're talking about. Um, but it's really good for blogging. Like I'm finding the more I use credible stats in my blog post, it really shows that I'm not just a blogger, that I, I know what I'm talking about. Like, you understand what I mean? Like, I'm not just writing a fluff piece. I am actually writing something with stats. And like, even if you have something like a lifestyle, like a craft blog, perfectly stylish cuts, you can still add stats about um, stay at home moms and the struggle. They might, there's a stat out there probably for stay at home moms and the struggle 
um, of keeping their kids entertained. Definitely, right? You can pull some stats in to make it credible so, so people believe you and they want to trust you that you know what you're talking about, right? And if you add that in the introduction and then go in like, look, you know, I have these awesome crafts that keep my kids entertained for hours. If that's what it is, I'm sorry if, you, if I'm pigeonholing you into like kids crafts, but if it's more, if you're doing crafts for like adult women, like home decor crafts, you can still draw from uh, some stats about that, about budgeting and how expensive it could be to purchase things. And then you can find a stat for that. And like, well, now you can DIY your crafts and I'm going to show you. Like there's lots of different avenues. I'm sorry, I don't know what type of crafts you do. I'm only thinking kids crafts because I have kids here and I'm trying to think of crafts here for me. I saw some clay. So I think I might do some clay. My daughter is into slime but it's getting real messy so and smelly with the shaving cream. So I think um, I'm gonna try and get her to do clay instead. Um, but that's another story. <laughs> Circuit crafts, yes, I know. We talked about this in your craft things, I know. I thought you were haircut, remember? And But you're not, yes, you're circuit crafts. That's a, top, that's a very popular topic. And so you can definitely find some topics for, yeah, for adults. <laughs> And find some stats for that. <laughs> um, I'm sure you could. I mean, it's, yeah. But anyways, yes, so I showed all that stuff. Uh, yes, thanks for joining me, you guys. Um, I'm here for a few minutes if you guys have any questions about content, about writing. Um, I'm a lot better, as you can tell. I'm not as sick. My son is sick, so he's at, at home. My daughter's at school. Um, my daughter had gymnastics yesterday, so I was really proud of her her friends didn't make it um but they're also in the group but they didn't make it yesterday so she was there all by herself with some new girls and she integrated very nicely so i'm really happy with that although i had a lot of struggles this morning it's hard it's hard raising a tween like she like jumped into being a teen and a tween or whatever they call it like in february and it's just it's an uphill battle for me it really is Good morning. Good morning. You're too funny. Love your lives. I'm glad you're feeling better. Thanks. Yes. I am feeling better. I started using the neti pot. I'm always hesitant to use the neti pot because it does aggravate my sinuses, especially when I'm sick and it burns. So I just use like the packets of the packets. So I use like barely any salt solution um, and I don't use it every day. And that seems to help. I get bloody noses from the neti pot too. So yeah, so I'm very hesitant to use it, but it does definitely work dr to drain me, to drain me, um, because I'm prone, I'm prone to sinus infections when I'm when I'm sick. Um, but yeah, hey you guys, if you guys have any questions, um, I, my notes are over there, so I'm just looking to see, make sure I mentioned everything. Is creating content based on psychology books considered as breaking copyright? No, I think as long as you source your the psychology books you're you're writing about and you say that from the psychology book, then you should have no problem. But if you're just ripping thoughts and you're ripping uh, ideas from a book and putting them onto a blog post without any sourcing, then yeah, that would that wouldn't be uh, the best blogging practice. I would definitely source it, just source it. And you can use that as an affiliate link. If there's some psychology books that you can um, find on Amazon, if not, then if it's like an EPUB, definitely source that, definitely source that. It looks good too for a lot of, for Google. It looks good when you source your uh, credible stats and it looks good that you are using that stat to help create valuable content. Hopefully that helped uh, for on Farank, Farank. Hey, nobody really joined. <laughs> hey, you joined. Um, yeah, so definitely with the credible sources, I do have a blog post on Elna Kane. If you want to take a look just so that you're on the right path um, and how to do that. I don't know if I show you how to. Maybe I should put a section. I always update that blog post to make it more valuable. But I have a blog post called How to Easily Find Credible Sources for Research and for Freelance Writing Clients. And so I've been adding to this. And so I do have a video. And at the bottom, I show you Google how to do it. And then 
um, here, PubMed, at PubMed right here, you can source Google Scholar, Google Books. These are all sources you can use to search for some pubs right there. And here's lots more right there, all of these, all right? Those are places you can grab uh, journal articles. Here's a database, all right? And here's some for digital marketing. Here's some journals for digital marketing. All right, so I have a lot here. So make sure you check that out. Um, just go to elmacane.com and type in credible sources or research or something. Probably credible source would be where you would find the blog post. Hopefully that helped. Um, but yeah, it's important, especially if you are doing this for clients. Um, but it works for your own piece too. It really does. It adds a level of um, authority to your content when you can source things like that. It makes you almost look like a journalist. Um, and Google likes that when you can sort things, uh, cite things. Um, because they have quality raters that come to your site and they, they look for these markers. They don't want to rank content that from a person that isn't credible, right? That's expertise, authority, and trust. That's the eat factor that I do share a lot in Ready, Set, Blog for Traffic about having that really solid eat factor. When I look at something like Smart Mom Ideas, my content for recipes rank, my content for pregnancy ranks, my content for uh, kid stuff ranks. So for lifestyle content, the eat factor isn't that heavy, right? The eat factor is only for your life, your money, like really like like health, finance, personal finance, cryptocurrency, um, and even like jobs, like my thing is a YMYL. But like a lifestyle, if pregnancy can be, but I am finding uh, keywords that I can rank for with the pregnancy content. Um, but like kid content, craft content, like crafts, um, you don't need a strong eat. You just need good keywords, right? That's all you need. Hey guys, thanks for joining me. If you have any questions about content, just pop them in. Hey, thank, thanks, Finest Quill. Thanks for joining me. <laughs> yeah, I just went through valuable content, how to demonstrate valuable content. I've already done that. So make sure to check the live when it's published. But I'm just taking any kind of questions that you guys have about content, about writing, uh, blogging, I'm going to think about doing a lesson in, in Ready, Set, Block for Traffic about creating pin titles and my my new pinning, like what I'm doing for pinning right now is different. So I can sh demonstrate that in a lesson in Ready, Set, Block for Traffic. Oh, Katavia says a client wants my help updating the copy on her website. There's so much to read. Is it okay to suggest we got the copy? I'm going to read it. Um, well, is that a service you're offering? I mean, I know you want to, how do I get out of here? Oh, I know you, oh, wait, do you want me to answer this live? I'm sorry, Katavia. I just read it out loud. Do you want me to answer that live or privately? Let me know. I didn't know you can ask a question that way. I This is all new to me. So yes, please. Which one? Live? Hey, Zane Z. Thanks for joining me. I'm just doing a live on, um, I did on valuable content and now I'm just taking questions. I'm assuming it's live. So she's a bridal MUA and esthetician. If you're looking at our copy and you're like, you know what, it's just not going to work. I mean, I, I would present it to her in a nice way, saying that I looked over your copy and see if you can salvage some things, even if it's like the flow of the of the of the page, if that's what she wants to demonstrate, even if you can keep something like that or you can demonstrate a mock copy of like, this is what I feel would do better for your business for optimizing optimizing your conversions. Yeah, I mean, when you when she wants updated copy, 
ask her, is it okay? Um, like when you say updated, do you mean like if I have to do a total revamp? Are you okay with a total revamp? Like call it a revamp and see what she says. If she's like, no, you know, for updating, I just wanted you to update certain parts of it. You'll get a feel exactly. But if she's open to like a, a wipe, like a total wipe, revamp, new slate, like mention those words and see what she says. If she's not open to that, you need to work with what she's given you. If you want to keep that client and if you want her to be happy, right? You can, you can, if she's like, I just want this and this, you can tell her, look, look, I will do it for you. But just realize that my recommendations are this, this, and this. And it, and you're telling me you're not going to go with my recommendations. So I am showing you, this is what I think. Um, basically like, um, what's the word protecting yourself, right? Protecting yourself so that they don't come back to you and say, look, I hired you and now I'm not ranking and yada, yada, yada. Well, you didn't follow my suggestions. I emailed them to you. I have it written out for you. And you decided to do this. Like you have a formal report. Like, yeah, so definitely. I would definitely do something like that. So it's the wording that you use and just be clear on her expectations. If she's okay with that. Some people aren't. Some people aren't. I hired a, um, a couple years ago, I hired a copywriter to look over my emails, my email funnel. And so um, it's Erin, Erin uh, Pennings, who's a course, a Write to 1K course student, actually. She's doing really well with copywriting. I think she's hiring junior copywriters now. So she's, she's really good. Um, so I hired her to look through my stuff and she did a really good job um, providing support. You know, like I said, I need help with um, the emails and any suggestions that you have for, for the funnel. And so she was able to offer me suggestions and, be, oh, and I was open to that, right? So, and she was really good at providing feedback and providing like what we demonstrated. So I think that's important. I think um, having those markers in your conversation with a client really helps. Thank you. Another question. As a beginner, is it better to start creating content on a platform like Medium and be seen as a personal platform? Um, well, it depends what your goal is. You know, Medium is a nice way to show your content. If you want to do paid writing, right? If you want to do freelance writing, you can use it as a portfolio, only as like a portfolio. But I strong, me personally, I just believe that a writer website shows a professional touch. Um, it's not 100% necessary. There are highly successful writers that have no writer website. They are not on social media. And that kudos to them. Kudos to them. My strategy is different. My strategy is I want you to get out there. I want you to be known. I want you, I want people to, to know who you are. Like you can find work that way much easier. I want you to be on LinkedIn. I want you to connect with people. You know, like I want you to have a, a writer website. I want you to be in different places. Have a medium profile. Have a uh, contently profile. Get in all these places. Be out there, right? Because it's a, like blitzing the internet because that's easier to get known. It's faster to find clients that way. And it's building up your brand, right? I started this whole thing in 2014, and now like, I have a piece of the internet. Like, I am everywhere now because I chose to be on Contently. I chose to be on YouTube and Facebook and LinkedIn and now Instagram. I chose to do all these things to, have, to build my, my name and my credibility. But as a beginner, you can definitely start on Medium. Start on Medium and then you can add a writer website or you can add a Contently portfolio, right? Like try that and see. You were wondering that. Oh, good, Simply Alexandra. Another question from Katrali. I feel a copywriter coach would be beneficial to me, my business. Any suggestions on this? Um, I don't know, like talk to Erin, Erin Pennings um, and see if she is taking any junior copywriters because she was. But she might have um, another resource, another copywriter that she knows that's taking someone. Because you definitely want to be a junior copywriter that's under someone. Not, def not necessarily a, a copywriter coach, but a junior copywriter so that you get work and feedback. Um, definitely. Hey, you guys. Thanks. Um, yeah, I would do that. And I'm going to put that in my post too, like um, in my copywriter post, I do have like a junior copywriter section because I think that's the route to go instead of going through the coaching, 
work under someone, work under a senior copywriter, junior copywriter, like, like what chefs do, right? Like the sous chef and all that. That's the structure for copywriters, I'm finding. You know, for freelance writing, it's a little bit different. You can have a freelance writing coach, but um, because there's no like senior freelance writer. Like I, I, I don't think so. Um, and it's worked for me, you know, like I did have coaching for a while, but that I, I stopped that once I had my course and now I'm helping people with like as a, as a, as a, um, a teacher, I guess as a teacher, but try Erin Pennings. I mean, just type her in, in Google, Erin Pennings copywriter, and you can go to her site. But if you're, are you in the group? Are you a right to 1k student, Kurtavia or not? Are you, are you ready set blog for traffic student? Um, yeah, because if you're in the right to 1k, you can definitely just tag her and find her there. All right, guys, I'm going to get going. It's um, an early morning. I'm going to do my emails. Um, but thanks for joining me. Thanks for asking the questions. And I hope you found some good tips with uh, showing value in your content because that's key. It's key to ranking. It's key to making money with your content. It, there's a lot of benefits to having value in your content so that you grow as a blogger or as a freelancer. All right, you guys. Have a good day.